Good morning, good morning, and welcome to our first CHP UK webinar. I'm David Hewitt, UK Sales Manager. So today uh, we're going to be talk covering our new silicone phone. But first, I'm going to start by giving you an overview of the CHT group and then pass over to Ian Taylor, who's going to demonstrate the silicone phone for you. We're going to take about 20 minutes of your time and we'll have a Q&A session opened to you during the event. And at the end, we'll try and answer as many questions as we can. So let's get started by giving you an overview of the group. CHT are a worldwide operating group of companies producing speciality silicones. For more than 65 years, we've offered high grade chemicals, auxiliaries, additives, as well as services in numerous industrial fields and markets. So let's have a look at CHT itself. CHT is a medium sized global player, uh, sorry, global player for the silicone chemical specialities, covering four business fields, consumer care, paper chemicals, industrial production, and elastomers, the topic for today. Worldwide, we have more than 25 companies covering 10,000 customers with 5,000 products. Revenue in 2020 was over 506 million euros. With silicone elastomer production sites in Germany, USA, Italy, UK and China, giving us the ability to manufacture the same product in multiple sites. So with a versatile silicone range, the CHT group has been a long standing partner and supplier for numerous industrial core segments with an international team of skilled experts in the field of speciality silicones combined with top quality and global availability. We strive to be the first choice when it comes to silicon expertise, service and product range, supporting both large enterprises and small niche producers with the same, same level of commitment and diligence. OK, so let's have a look at a few of the markets that we supply into. The main markets we specialise in are aerospace, automotive or e-mobility as is a new trend and electronics, renewable energy, composites and LED, just to name a few. So manufacturing capabilities, let's have cover this one for you. We offer flexible production capability, anything from one tonne to 100 tonnes. Bespoke customer product development using an existing formulation or an idea to suit that customer's needs. With state-of-the-art R&D and application labs and production facilities, our team's ready to solve your current application challenges. Together, we can customize silicon formulations to suit your application with comprehensive global R&D and testing facilities. OK, so at this point, let's have a look at a few of the products and applications. So the first one we're looking at is um, silicone encapsulants and adhesives for technical applications. So thermally conductive materials, heat resistant or fire resistant materials that would cover UL94 V0, we have those already approved, high temperature resistance materials, a range of different shore hardnesses, optically clear materials, one and two part materials, RTVs, otherwise known as room temperature vulcanizing, a lot of people ask that question, and heat cure, and lastly LSRs. So where do we put these? So main one that we're targeting is silicones for electric vehicles. So as I previously mentioned, silicone interface materials or thermally conductive materials, adhesives for bonding, heat protection and environmental protection, encapsulants for general PCB encapsulation, gap fillers, silicon gels for vibration damping or for internal PCB protection, heat sink compounds, otherwise known as silicone greases, and then lastly, obviously silicone foam, which is what we're talking about today. OK, so at this point, I'd like to hand you over to Ian, who is going to demonstrate the new silicone phone for you. Over to you, Ian. Thanks for that, Dave. Welcome, everybody. We really appreciate your time in joining the webinar. So my name is Ian Taylor. I am the new Northern UK sales manager for CHT. I also look after the Scandinavian market for the business. So today I wanted to talk about CHT's newly developed liquid silicon foam. So what is it? It's a low viscosity, medium density, two component foam, which is ideal where lightweight, low smoke and toxicity are required. CHT sees its potential use of the product in the EV, aerospace and also electronic sectors. So we're proud to introduce to you Silso Light 21025. So why have CHT developed a silicon foam? Well, CHT see real potential for the use of this product in the manufacture of EVs and its components. 
Applications can include battery cell protection in case of a thermal event, basically meaning if the cell catches fire, the foam will help prevent thermal runaway. You also see it has cushioning and vibration dampening qualities, along with noise reduction, protection from extreme temperatures, protection from the environment. That could be rain, chemical, water ingress and debris. Another application we could look at is PCB staking. We have a video on this, um, I'll show you that soon. But you could also have it as potting and encapsulation where saving weight is a prerequisite. They're just some of the applications that it could be used for. However, CHT will be releasing more exciting products early next year, including thermal interface grades for EV potting of the electrical motor, potting of the battery management unit, electronics unit, and we'll be releasing a gap filler for interface between a heat source and heat sink. So in the industry, we have seen different types of foam. We've seen foam compression pads. These are used as a fire barrier for battery cells and pouches, designed as a separator in the prismatic battery pack to keep aluminium cooling fins in contact with the pouches, which contain the lithium ion chemistry. A syntactic foam where preformed hollow spheres as fillers are bound together with a polymer offering lightweight stiffness and strength. The Silso Light 21025 is a self-blowing foam, creating a closed cell structure, meaning it has a two-part chemical reaction that takes place to form the cell structure, which in turn makes the foam. So in this next slide, I'm just going to play this for you. Uh, it's a time-lapse video. Um, this is just to show you how the foam reacts when it's dispensed. So you can see it flowing into the component, into the cup there. How we did this, we did it with a 400 mil side-by-side -side cartridge by a manual corking gun. The mixer that you can see is a consumable throwaway item. It's an eight millimeter, 32 element turbo mixer, which we have seen gives us the best cell structure from a dispense gun. The Silso Light 21025 is an easy mix one to one ratio material. Now you've clearly seen the low viscosity of the material earlier flowing into the cups. Now after a few seconds, you would have seen, and it's happening now actually, the chemical reaction takes place, which in turn creates the foam structure. Now this product has a gel time of around 150 seconds at 23 degrees. Now, if the material is not used within this time, it will start to gel off in the mixer and a new mixer would need to be used. Which could add cost, of course. In real time, this video is six minutes. However, full cure will actually happen in less than 10 minutes. So as we've gone through this video, you would have noticed the rise of the material to around two to three times its liquid volume. Now, I'll just let this play out for a little bit. Um, we won't go for the full six minutes, but you can see here from when it was obviously a liquid dispensed from the gun, it's now changing to a foam. And after about 10 minutes, you're, you'll be able to, it's, it's cured and ready to go at room temperature, ambient temperature. Now, in this second video, we have tried to show you what this could look like in a real world application. Now we have set up a mock battery cell pack just to give you an idea of this. The material is being dispensed from metering equipment via material pails or machine mounted hoppers, which in turn will feed the pumps, which feed the robot mounted mixer head. This robot would have been programmed for dispense speed and volume. So what that means is you would get repeatability time and time again. Now, as a manufacturing process, it would be beneficial to have all your components ready to pot. This is because, as mentioned before, the gel time is short and you don't want to be continually purging the material to waste 
and clearing the mixer, which could add additional cost to the process. So this will start to pan in here, but you can see the reaction of the foam around the cells. Again, this is a time lapse, so this would go on for a few minutes. But you get the general idea of how the material reacts and rises under its chemical reaction. In this last video, again, it's a real world application that we've tried to mimic. It's a mock up of a PCB board. And this is where you'll be able to see material being dispensed for staking components onto the board. Now, the benefits of this is obviously weight saving and a quick gel time, helping to increase production throughput. Again, time lapse video, but this just shows you the, the staking process, which we're doing here. So CHT liquid silicon foam, I just want to go through the key features of this product. It's easy to dispense. It's a one to one ratio and that can be done via a cartridge or via dispensing equipment. The material can be available in pails. It's low viscosity, the A side around about 25,000 millipascals and the B side 12,000 millipascals. Gel time, we said about 153, 150 seconds, something like this. And it has a fast cure of around 10 minutes at room temperature, 22, 23 degrees, something like this. The temperature range is very good as it's silicon, minus 50 degrees C to 200 degrees C. And this product creates a medium density foam of around 0 0.40 grams centimeter cube. We see a density drop in SG from 1.2 to 0.55 SG. And you would have seen in the videos, we've seen a volumetric expansion of 218% of the original liquid volume. It has really good adhesion. We've trialed this myself and Dave to most substrates, certainly a lot of metals. If it does struggle to adhere, then you could use one of our primers if required. Now, we are confident as a business that this product will meet UL 94 V1 as a minimum. So that's about the phone. What I want to do now is just move on to the Q&A session to see if we've got any questions that have come through. Just bear with. OK. So. I think you've got a question there, Dave. Yeah, we've got one question asking how much does it expand by? As Ian's just mentioned, so we're looking at 218 percent as the expansion rate. Um, that's coming from anonymous and we've also got another question. Kit sizes. Um, kit sizes for we're, look, we're potentially looking at 40 kilo kits, so 20 of A, 20 of B. Um, and then also then the cartridge side, which is a 400 mil side by side cartridge. Uh, and then we've got a question from Radak. He's asking um, what's generated during the cure. That's hydrogen that's initiated during the cure of the uh, of the material. But at such low PPM, it's not going to cause you any issues as with uh, with combustion and so on. Uh, so those one those questions coming there. Yeah, I've, I've got one, Dave. It, it mentions about um... The density, can can we produce higher density or, or lower density foams? Um, well, this product was um, done in R&D in the US. And yeah, that's certainly something that, that we could look at. That's not an issue at all. Um, it would mean obviously a tweak in the chemistry, but you know, with the, the, the requirements that are out there at the moment, certainly in the battery industry for lightweight foams, you know we're we're open to to any any options really where people want to sort of if their requirement is that then then we can help for sure yeah and it's worth mentioning at this point the, the adhesion is very very good to certainly most metals all the metals um, and to some plastics 
Obviously, we'd use a primer if the adhesion isn't quite to, to where you need it, so all the options are there. Um, I've got a question here, Dave. Um, what is the class classification of part A and B in the MSDS? I think that would probably have to, we can come back to you on that. Um, we don't need to get the M MSDS from the guys in the, the US. Yeah, sure. I don't think there's any reach issues because we've had it through to the UK, haven't we? So, but we, we can certainly get back to that. We'll make a note on that. Mm. What we do is at the end of this session, we will put up um, our contact details, email address. So you can just fire that that information to us and we can we can respond to you privately. So we've got a few coming in now. Can we use a sealant or just as for potting? Sealant less so, I think, really. We've obviously got sealants for that application, but it's, it's uh, really it's for lightweight potting is where we're targeting at, but always worth trying different ideas. Yeah. Okay, so right at that point i think we'll we'll probably stop there because there's a few questions coming in so i think at this point we will probably ask you to get in contact with us now at this point if you can um uh, we'll put up on the screen now our contact details um and we'll show you how, how you can get hold of, uh, of, um, of ourselves within the group yeah i'll just bring that up just switch that over for you Okay, so there you see um, the CHT website, obviously, we're through LinkedIn and what have you. And also published just prior to this event is the um, e-paper, which is worthwhile looking at. It's quite a clever little tool where it will uh, expand on what we've been telling you about this morning uh, on the uh, electronic grades. Um, so there we are. And I think in the next page, if we put that up, we should show you all of our contact details. Yeah, did you mention about in the published area, Dave? Um, did you mention that? Sorry. No, no we've got the CHT Silicon's website. So I've put that as a uh, on the published section. Um, and also, they mentioned the e paper that we've got for the, the electronic e paper, which is really worth a good look. Um, it does show you some of the thermal grades that we offer, uh, some of the adhesives. Um, but like I mentioned earlier in the slide, we you know, we don't sit in our laurels at CHT. What we're looking to do is we've got a fantastic technical department and R&D team. And what these guys do is they try and respond or work with what's happening out in the market. So, you know, we will be bringing out in the new year gap fillers, uh, low viscosity thermal interface materials, um, which go hand in hand with the EV sector. So, just on to the last page, here are our contact details. So we have David, who mentioned he's the UK sales manager. We'll leave this up for a couple of minutes. So we have David's email and we also have David's contact number. You have myself, the, cover, the areas that I cover, my email address and contact details. So please feel free to, to send any information over. If you have any inquiries on on this this webinar um, we've also got a contact at our head office in bridgewater valerie moss she is um, technical services coordinator valerie will have information and access to msds sheets and such like for this but there is an email address for for val which is info.uk at cht.com so We'll leave this up for a couple of minutes, but I think what we'll do is um, really like to appreciate your time in spending the effort to to come to the webinar um, and pose your questions. And please, anything that we can help with, get in touch. And um, yeah, we'll we try That's to great. move forward in 2022. Thanks everyone for right. attending and wish you all a happy Christmas. And yeah, maybe catch up with you soon. Okay, thanks. Thank bye. you. Bye.